Jenny, when moving to cottage country in Ontario, whether it be full-time or part-time, there are a few things that you need to ask yourself and a few things you need to consider. Country living is not like city living. I mean, beyond the city mouse, country mouse analogy. Um, are you a country mouse or a city mouse? I don't know. I kind of have kind of jumped from city mouse to country mouse. Fair enough. But there are definitely some things that have come a long way in cottage country. Uh, we have fine dining is available in most communities. Mm -hmm. uh, internet has come a long way. It's faster and definitely more reliable. Mm -hmm. And anything that you can't get locally is just a click away. But that being said, Jenny, there's still a few things that haven't changed in decades. And these are the things that you need to be aware of. So let's look at number one. Really, let's let's consider it as a water in, water out question. Okay. Okay. So unlike an urban environment, in the country, you have to provide your own water supply mm -hmm. to come in and your own treatment for it going out. And I'm saying that 90% of the time, Jenny. Yeah. Okay. So water in. It's going to be from either a well or a lake or river. And what do you mean lake or river? Doesn't it freeze in the wintertime? Well, no. I mean, it's come a long way uh, in the past decade or so. We can have heated water lines. And then once the water comes in, whether it be from the well or from a uh, other source, like a lake or river, then UV systems, reverse osmosis, treat it so that you have potable or drinkable water right okay so everything Dean that comes into the cottage will eventually find its way out right so we're talking septic systems uh, and if you're new to uh, country living or cottage country uh, this may be uh, a new concept for you and it could be a, a bit of a learning curve to to get used to and understand most rural properties are on septic systems, aren't hooked up to a municipal sewer system, so you're going to be responsible for treating all the waste that comes out of the house yourself. That sounds scary, Jenny. It can be, but I, I mean, for someone who isn't comfortable with it, but once you get used to understanding how a septic system works, the things you should and should not flush into your septic system, um, and what type of maintenance is required, it's really not that scary, Dean. Um, what's scary is when it's not properly maintained. Okay. Uh, a, a septic system should be pumped out every three to five years, depending on how often you use it and, and what type of stress you put on the system. And trust me, that's not something you want to shirk away from because that system will fill up and it will start to back up and it usually only happens when you have guests over and uh, and it's new year's and eve. it's new year's eve we've uh, we've had that happen and it's not a pleasant situation it was in our house though thankfully right <laughs> the next question you're going to have to ask yourself is location 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 what do you mean by that jenny we hear that in real estate all the time but not in this sense, I don't think. Um, we're not talking about whether your property is on a desirable lake chain or it's on Premier Street in a, in a community. Um, You're just close to close schools to and that sort of thing. You're not talking about that? I'm not talking about oh, okay. that. I'm talking about whether or not you can physically get to the property when you want to. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, so not all cottage roads are paved not all cottage roads are plowed um, and I'm thinking winter months in the summer months you can pretty much get anywhere you want to in cottage country but come winter when the snow flies and put on your plaid shirt exactly yeah. and things uh, the snow starts to build up certain cottage roads just shut down for the season and you can't get to them right so let's talk about the ones that you can get to mm -hmm. uh, so even if they're municipally maintained or perhaps by a private contractor, they may not be cleared right away, No. right? Big snowfalls happen and they can happen quite quickly here in cottage country. And the road may not be plowed for two or three days. Not all the time, but it can happen, Jen. In big storm situations, it definitely can. Right. So thinking about that, and roads in cottage country aren't plowed the way city or highway roads are plowed. 
Uh, and sanded and salted and all that. So if you don't have winter tires, get them. if you're traveling on all seasons, you may get stuck. If you have a compact car, it may not be the best solution for every type of cottage road. That's right. So how, what would you do then, Jenny, if you were a buyer out there looking? Maybe that could be an impediment to you. Definitely. That access road. Unless, of course, you want to buy a cottage and then buy a new 4x4 truck. If you're looking for a reason, there's one for you. There it is. Yeah, but it's definitely a question we ask our buyers all the time. How do you plan to use it? When do you plan to use it? What do you currently drive? And will that be able to get you where you need to go? So sometimes a great deal isn't the right deal for you if you can't get there when you want to. We've been down uh, private roads that uh, are maintained by uh, private contractors, but they're long. I mean, you could be three, four, five kilometers to get to that cottage. So ask yourself that, you know, when moving to cottage country or like we said, full or part time, do you really want to be that remote? Right, May especially in the winter. Yes, maybe you want to be on a municipal road that's providing easy access for and close to uh, other people should something happen. Right. Now, of course, if you're the more adventurous type, maybe you want that remote type location and you already have the 4x4 and you have a snow snowmobile right. and you have an ATV, then maybe that's the one for you. So there's a lot to think about when it comes to buying property in cottage country. And these are just a few of the questions you're going to have to ask yourself when you start to narrow down what it is you're looking for and where you're looking. And if you'd like more information on buying property in cottage country, watch this video. Thanks for tuning in.